Welcome to today's edition of History Homeschool at the Hayward House in Bluffton, South Carolina. Today's lesson will be on life of children before and after the Civil War. But before we do that, I'd like to show you my bestowed custom-made dress by Susan Stephen. Susan is a very talented seamstress. She is also one of our volunteers and is on our event committee. Now children's clothes during the early 1800s were quite a bit different from today. Boys and girls both wore dresses until boys reached four or five. Then boys would wear shorts. About age 10, they would wear long pants. Children's lives before the Civil War were different than after. Before the Civil War, they were able to partake in more leisurely activities. Toys were typically made of cloth or wood. Later on, metal items were popular. Children had time to read. They focused on their studies. Planter children were well educated. They did learn chores such as sewing. and they did help around the house. However, after the Civil War, when enslaved labor was not available, and many of the families did not have servants, children took on many more roles. Roles included bringing in water, and they didn't have running water actually in this house until the 1950s. Children were responsible for bringing in water and changing out the wash basin, emptying the chamber pots, making candles, fetching firewood, making soap, sewing, many items that we just take for granted today. In our collection, we have quite a few clothing items. After the Civil War, the Haywards lived here. One of those children was Thomas Daniel Hayward. He married Selena Johnstone in 1884. And his relatives donated quite a few Hayward items, including Thomas Daniel Hayward's wedding vest, Selena's part of her bodice and a Hayward christening gown. Children's roles after the Civil War changed and their families were more dependent on their work. Many children started working to earn money for the family. Boys could be newsboys, Girls and boys also could work in the oyster industry, which was vital to Bluffton's economy. Oftentimes, Polish migrant workers would come down with their families, but many locals worked in the oyster factories, even children as young as six years old. In the early 1900s, Lewis Hine traveled the country documenting child laborers including quite a few in the Bluffton area. Child labor laws soon changed, and today there are rules and laws about child children working in industries. Thank you for joining us today at History Homeschool at the Hayward House in Bluffton, South Carolina.